results-based Environment Agri Pilot Project, or REAP, is a two-year project that will test on a national scale the results-based model successfully used by the Burren Programme and various EIP projects, including the Hen Harrier Project and the Pearl Mussel Programme. In REAP, farmers are rewarded for their environmental services, whilst given the freedom and the flexibility to farm. Grassland, field margins and field boundaries are all scored using indicators which reflect the environmental value of these features. The higher the environmental quality, the higher the payment a farmer receives. The indicators used for scoring have been carefully chosen so as to be fair to the farmer, insofar as they do not respond to changes outside the influence of his or her agricultural practices. This approach provides an incentive for farmers to earn payments for managing their farmland in an environmentally friendly manner. So how do we assess this quality? We do this using our Habitat scorecards. As the habitat quality is under the farmer's control, the farmer can increase their score should they wish to do so. In REAP, we have two habitat scorecards, a higher value, low input grassland scorecard and a scorecard for sown multi-species lays. When preparing for your field assessment, there are a few essentials to make sure to take with you. You'll need the REAP information booklet to help describe the project to the farmer, a habitat scorecard, a map of the farm printed off, a clipboard, pens, phone, and your plant identification keybook. The first thing I'll do when I come to a field to be scored is to take a photo of the field. This is important to show that you are in a suitable field, as fields with a high proportion of ryegrass are not eligible for the project. To do this, I'll log on to the AgriSnap application on my phone and then take the photo. This is the low input grassland scorecard, which has nine questions to assess the quality of the field. These make up a total score out of 100. This score is divided by 10 to give the field score and corresponding payment. I will walk a W shape across the field, stopping regularly to note the presence and abundance of positive indicator species. It is important to walk a W shape across the entire field to capture any variation in sward structure and composition. For help with species identification, you can refer to your plant identification key book to help you. Estimating cover can be tricky. That is why I need to walk a W shape throughout the field to get a good representation of the distribution of species. If you turn to the back of the scorecard, there is some guidance here to help you. For example, I would mark the cover as low if I had to search for species throughout the field. If I find one every couple of steps, then it's medium, or one every step, it's high. This question looks at the level of grazing. Is it undergrazed or overgrazed? Is there a diversity in the structure of the sward? A good diversity in structure benefits water quality as there is less risk of sedimentation or runoff and it is far better for biodiversity. The litter levels would only come into play in a field that has been undergrazed so that there is a build-up of thatch of dead vegetation from the previous growing season. Tightly cut meadows with no field margin will score poorly on this question. Leaving wide field margins that have no herbicides or insecticides applied and wide headlands will yield full points for structure. First, I'd mark down which of these were seen and then refer to the guidance on the back of the scorecard for the different thresholds. In this instance, it is negligible to low, so that's less than 10%. That means it would be a score of zero for this question. What field margins has the farmer fenced into the field? There are no fenced field margins in this field. However, as the field achieved a score of 20 for question one and 15 for question two, given a combined score of 35, full marks for full margins can be awarded in this situation without needing for the fence to be moved back. Next, I will mark the field boundary features on a map. For hedgerows and tree lines, I will mark whether in condition A, B or C. I need to take a photo of one of each condition type in a field. But if a field has all hedgerows in condition B, then one photo showing an example in condition B will suffice. The southern boundary of this field is made up of a line of scrub. There are some trees along some of the boundary, but for the most part it is a line of bramble. The grassland scorecard only rewards marks for hedgerows and stone walls. This scrub is not a planted hedgerow. It doesn't receive any marks. Therefore, I will mark it on the map as other features. 
When you copy the boundaries you have marked on the map onto the online mapping facility GLAMS and digitize them there, GLAMS will automatically calculate the density per hectare of each to give you the score for this question. In this field, I have roughly measured the length of each boundary digitally before I came out, so that I know that even though there are no marks going for this particular boundary, that the combined length of other boundaries in good condition fall into the highest density per hectare bracket. So it still gets top marks here. Small fields with a higher proportion of boundaries will score more. First, I mark any negative species seen and then refer to guidance on the back of the card. It's important that I refer to this guidance each and every time, as the thresholds set for cover here are different than in the earlier cover questions. For example, low would be not visible or only occurring in one small patch, or high if occurring regularly in medium-sized patches across many field boundaries. This field has no evidence of poaching. Examples of evidence of damaging activities to soil, vegetation or water would include damage to water courses from livestock trampling or vehicle access, burning, dumping or extensive areas of bare ground or any damaged boundary features. The last part of the scorecard looks at management advice. It's a really good idea to tick one or more of these boxes for each field as the advice will be reproduced on a GLAMS PDF of the farm that you can give to the farmer, and it also helps to jolt your memory of what you have seen in the field. For this field, I'm going to tick two. Continue extensive management of this high quality grassland, and consider a late cut meadow in year two to qualify for a bonus payment of 50 euro per hectare. In a multi-species lay field, there are seven questions on the scorecard, and it's similar in structure to the Low Input Grassland Scorecard. Again, there is guidance on how to answer these questions on the back of the card. The Species Identification Keybook includes 12 of the more commonly sown legumes and herbs, so you can refer to this looking at leaf shapes as well as flowers to help with identification. For lays that have recently been sown and not all plants have grown up yet, you can refer to the seed label, but you must take a photo of this and submit it through the AgriSnap application. There is a big emphasis on margins in this card, as parts of the crop that are left to flower provide important nectar and pollen sources for pollinators. The more diverse mix sown, the better this will be for pollinators. To help you, you should familiarise yourself with the Species Identification Keybook and get to know positive and negative indicator species in the field. Thousands of farmers have signed up to reap and we need to support them by scoring the fields as accurately as possible so that the results-based model of payments is a success. For more information on REAP, please visit our website.